morning all. Another morning mysticism for you there. Out in the peace and quiet of the park once again. But I'm trying to squeeze this thought out. It's a bit jumbled in my head. But when I came in, I was just, it hit me and it, it hurt me. And I think it's, it's behind a lot of my, it's motivated a lot of my posturing when it comes to commenting on um, current ideologies of the way things are, modern ideologies, empirical ideologies, um, and I comment on them, and have commented on them for a long time, it's some kind of reactionary, distrusting, um, I don't like, I don't like it, I don't like the way we, <laughs> we think the way the world is, and the, the, the prevailing ideology. Um, and it's to do with history and ancient history and ancient culture. Because what I feel like I've been, what I feel like has happened is since we flexed the powers of the head intelligence. You know, the cranial intelligence, the powers of rationalism, empiricism, and since we've had the scientific enlightenment. Again, I always say this with good reason and with good benefit, because there's so much that we've gained from that. But since we've done that, um, we've cut out or shut off certain modes of con cognition, certain ways of understanding the world and it's like ah no look this is this is the best way now. This is the this is a better way to do things and again with good reason the march of science has got rid of a lot of nonsense. A lot of people filling in the gaps with basically what isn't true sweeping generalisation of what's happened but we've ended up with this linear view of history where what we are and where we are now is better and more informed about things um, and it's like the further back in time we go we were more and more stupid <laughs> um, and the knowledge then and the modes of cognition then were less evolved less useful and um, so I've been moaning against this for like <laughs> nearly 20 years I'd say this was before I even understood anything about prevailing ideologies and the western mindset and the scientific impulse and, and all that I didn't even understand that or know that that's what had happened I just always felt that something in our past is not being acknowledged and not giving the due credit. That was always my instinct. And now it, it almost makes sense. So the thought this morning was that, can we make a comparison between how much we repress and uh, forget, purposefully forget and castigate even our history is there a link between how we do that and how we have the same attitude towards certain parts of ourselves individually and maybe our own past now anyone who's in counselling or psychotherapy circles will hopefully understand that Self-loathing, self-hate, self-loathing, self-hatred, guilt, shame, all these kind of things that come from past misdemeanors, past misunderstandings, past acts, 
Um, even things where the motivation or the outcome wasn't even bad, even it, even just the past generally. Um, when we have that kind of attitude to our past, it's actually yeah, it's it's a it's a depression ultimately of the self and a criticism and judgment ultimately of ourself. Now we can extend that, or can we, to the human story? The human story. If we're to engage with what it means to be human and have a fuller understanding of that, then we have to engage with the past. And so how should we engage with our past? Is the way that I've described it, how we engage with our past due to our current powers, is that healthy? I don't think it is. I think it's arrogant. It's harmful. It's harmful. The, the complete subjugation, if you like, of the past, the history, completely. It's like it, it erases parts of our history, it erases parts of ourselves, it erases parts of the human story, as though they were meaningless and futile and no, not good. And that's just not true. That closes the door to all inquiry into the past. It closes the door to all of the amazing, amazing wisdom that you're sure to find if you have a curiosity about it. Human story and what people commit to the, to the story over the thousands of years in terms of what they think is important. A lot of what we now seem to call spiritual texts, texts or religious texts, that's human knowledge, that's human wisdom, that's, that's important for the times that we were in then, the human struggles and issues were the same, and we have interpretations of that, which upon inspection, many would say, are really, really helpful even today um, so it pains me to feel that we're subjugating and erasing huge parts of the human story massive parts of it and ultimately this is the attitude we take towards ourselves also and our past, our misdemeanours and it leads to all kinds of problems when we see ourselves individually and collectively like that I, I would I would propose I mean what do you think about how we engage with the past you think it's healthy let me know comments or otherwise and uh, I'll leave that one there I'll see you soon